In the last video, I gave some of the intuition behind the idea of standard costing. So in this video, we're just going to jump right in and we're going to do a variance analysis for direct materials. So let's look at an example. It'll be a little bit easier to understand the concept. So let's say that you run a woodworking shop and you manufacture wooden tables. Okay, so wooden tables are the product and you need to do some standard costing. So first off, you need to know, well, what is what is the standard that you are going to be basically using as the benchmark for your production? So we've got a couple standards here, and we've got a standard price, right? So we've got a buck and a quarter a pound. That means that you anticipate, you look ahead and say, I really think I should be paying no more than $1.25 a pound for wood. Now, I have no idea whether that actually approximates the, the cost of wood in the real world, but we'll just use it for our example. And then you have to come up with some kind of amount as well you need some kind of standard to say okay how much raw material how much wood should it take to build the table right when we're thinking about how how much wood actually goes in the inputs we're going to say eight pounds of wood uh, is, is sufficient to build the table and again i have no idea how realistic that is but but let's just go with these numbers and let's say that these are the standards that we set out at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the month and we say okay we want to compare our performance to that so now we say, okay, after a month, so at the end of the month, at the end of the period, we say we take a look and we say, okay, during that month, we purchased 950 pounds of wood. This is the actual total, right? So here we're just talking about standards and so forth. Now we say we look back and say we actually purchased 950 pounds and it cost us a buck forty a pound, right? So how much did we use? Well, we used 875 pounds of wood and we made 105 tables out of that. Now you might see, okay, wait a minute, right off the bat, we're gonna have a little bit of a complication because we didn't use all the materials that we purchased, right? And that's gonna put a little wrinkle in our calculations when we do the variance analysis, and I'll explain that when we get to it, but just, just note that we're, still, we're gonna have some leftover material here. So I know that it's probably complicated at this point. You just see all these different numbers and you're thinking, look, I don't even know where to plug in numbers. Just kind of go back to the formula that we talked about before when we're putting together a variance analysis. So we're going to have here in this column, we're, we're actually going to have three columns here. And then in the column on the, on the far left right here, we've got the actual quantity times the actual price. And in the middle column, actual quantity times standard price. And then in the third column, standard quantity times standard price. And then we can easily... Put, we can just kind of use this these formulas to go ahead and, and input these numbers. So let's start with the column on the far left and we'll compute our first variance. So what is our actual quantity? So our actual quantity is going to be 950 pounds. All right, so 950 pounds times the actual price. All right, so the actual price is $1.40. Okay, now you might be saying, okay, why did you use the 950 and why do you use the dollar 40? Okay, because what we're trying to do here, ultimately, we're going to compare this column to this column, and that's going to give us our price variance. Right? Now, to do that, we need to know what was the actual amount of wood we bought and the actual amount that we paid for it. Right? So we just go back to our given information and say 950 pounds at a dollar 40 a pound. Okay? Now when we go to our net well let me actually just compute out or excuse me let me just compute this for you so this is going to this is going to equal $1330 okay so now we go to this middle column now the actual quantity this aq is just going to stay the same right nothing's changed so we've got 950 or let, let me change the color here so we've got 950 pounds again right so that's no different, 950 pounds. But now we're multiplying it by the standard price. So this is that price that we said at the beginning. We say, okay, well, this is what we think we should, we shouldn't have to pay any more than that for wood. So it was $1.25. So we just plug that number in as the standard price, $1.25. Right now we just multiply that. That's going to give us 1187 dollars and 50 cents okay now we can 
before we even get into this third column, we can just go ahead and, and actually compute our price variance right now because we have enough information to do that. So, so I, let me give a little bit more space here. So when we think about our price variance, and let, let me just, it's helpful to me and it might be helpful to you too to kind of, well, let me change back to a different color. It's helpful to kind of draw a little link here so I don't get my variances mixed up. And we'll just we'll just put this right here. We'll just call this price variance. Right? This is the difference between what we thought we should have paid and what we actually paid. Right? So now our price variance, we just take the difference of these two numbers. Okay? And that's going to be $142. $142.50. Now this is going to be an unfavorable variance. So I'm going to put a U next to it. Now you might be saying, okay, how do you know this is an unfavorable variance? You know, why, why, why isn't it favorable and so forth? So let's just think about this conceptually. So in each case, the actual quantity was 950 pounds, right? So that's not different. What is different is the price we paid, right? And that's why we call it a price variance. Now let's take a look. The standard, what we thought we should have paid, was $1.25 a pound, right? But we actually paid $1.40. So that's a bad thing, right? That's a bit, we, we paid more than we thought we would for the wood, and therefore this variance, this, this difference between what we paid and what we thought we ought to pay, that's unfavorable. So that's all, that's all we're doing there. Now, let's go on to the quantity variance, right? So now we've, we've kind of taken care of this, but now we can take the middle column and we're going to compare it to this this third column however or let, let me just let, let's just put in the the numbers for the third column first it'll be a little easier to understand there's going to be a little wrinkle here that's going to have to do with the, the amount being different so the standard quantity right you say well how do we come up with this well what's the standard quantity amount of wood that we would have used to make 105 tables, right? Because that's how, we made 105 tables, but what's the standard quantity of wood? How many pounds of wood? So we'll say, okay, well, it was eight pounds a table. Remember that? So we just take, we can just take, and I'll just put here eight times 105, right? And then that's going to be our number right here, which is 840. Let me, let me change colors again here. I just really don't want you to get confused. So. We've got 840 pounds. Now, what, what does this mean? This means that given that we make 105 tables, the standard amount of wood that we think we should use to do that is 840 pounds of wood. Okay? Now, the standard price, that component, well, we've got, we can just copy that over from the middle column, right? We knew that that's $1.25 a pound. So I'll just, I'll put that in there, $1.25. Now we can go and just we'll just calculate this out and this is $1050. Now, here's where that caveat comes in. Before, remember we said okay, well we we purchased 950 pounds, but we only used 875, right? We didn't use all of what we bought. So, we can't just say, well let's just take the variance between these two numbers here and say that that's our variance. Because this this here is based on 950 pounds, right? But it's not really fair because we're trying to look at the quantity of wood that we used and compare it to what we ought to have used. But the thing is that we, we need to say, okay, well, wait a minute. We only used the 875 pounds, right? So it's not it's not fair to say, okay, well, let's compare it to 950. We, we still got 75 pounds left over. Right, so when we're looking at how much wood we used versus how much we should have used, we need to say, okay, well, how much? What was our actual, right? For in term now over here, we use the 950 as the actual quantity because that was the actual quantity purchased. But now we're talking about the quantity variance, and we're talking about the actual amount of material used, and that's 875 pounds. All right now, if this was 950, just like the purchase. Then we can just go ahead and take our difference here and we'd be done. But let's so let's scroll down a little bit and give ourselves a little bit of space. And now we'll go and uh, let me let me just try and keep these colors changing up for you. Go with uh, go with red. So 
now we can say that we'll we'll kind of recompute this middle column. Let's say 875 pounds. That's the actual amount used times that dollar 25 a pound. Okay, and then that's equal to 1,093 dollars and 75 cents. Okay, now we can go and compute our variance. And and let me I'll put all the variances in yellow. So now this is it's not going to look very pretty but now we've got our quantity variance I'll just write that in here this is the quantity variance this is the difference between the amount of wood if we look and say okay we think it should only take X amount of wood to make a table and we actually produce Y amount of wood that or use Y amount of wood that difference is the quantity variance right so we want to make sure we're not wasting too much wood and so now we just take the difference between this number and this number, and that's going to be $43.75. I'll just write that here. $43.75 is our quantity variance, and that is an unfavorable, let me make a better, U, or, well, I'll put it blue again. So that's an unfavorable variance that we have there for a quantity. So well, what does that mean? That means that if we just drill down and look, and we say, okay, let's look at this, and let's look at this. The standard quantity, or excuse me, the standard price in each case has not changed, right? In each case, it's $1.25. What has changed? Well, the amount that we used. We thought beforehand that it would only take 840 pounds of wood to make 105 tables. But in fact, it took us 875 pounds of wood. That's not a good thing, right? Maybe we made some mistakes when we were calculating how much wood it ought to be. Maybe we didn't come up. But assuming that we had a good estimate here, somehow we lost 35 pounds worth of wood. That we maybe were, were our, uh, maybe we weren't very careful when we were doing uh, the machining. Whatever the case, this is just a little bit of a flag. Hey, we wasted wasted some wood here. We've got a quantity variance. But now I can see actually the main variance, the one that's driving the difference, is actually the price. So that's. That might be more just a factor of the market, though. It might just be the, the price of wood change. There's not a whole lot we could do about it. But in terms of the quantity variance, then we can start looking at our production process and say, hey, what, what's going on here? Now, if we think about a larger firm, you might say, okay, well, why, why, why are we even breaking out into all this fineness of detail? At a larger firm, there's going to be two different managers who have responsibility for this, right? So this price variance... Right, this price variance would be the responsibility of the purchasing manager. So if the CEO is upset and wants to know who to talk to about these differences, the price variance, they would go and say to the purchasing manager, hey, what's going on here? Why did we have this unfavorable variance? However, the quantity variance, now with that, we're thinking of somebody like the production manager. Right, because the, purchase, the purchasing manager doesn't have anything to do with whether you use too much wood or what, what, whatever the product is you're manufacturing. That's more something you talk to the production manager about. So we're actually, with these variances, we're actually separating out the responsibilities, and then we can drill down and say, okay, who do we need to talk to about this problem? And you might notice that although in the past we've talked about a total variance where we say, okay, well, now we could take the price and the quantity and actually come up with a total variance, we can't do that in this case because of that issue where we used a different amount than we had actually purchased. Right, because it's just a total variance wouldn't make sense in this case, uh, because that that there's that difference. Right, we we actually purchase 950 pounds of wood, but use 875. So in this case, we're not there's, we're not going to compute a total variance because it wouldn't tell us anything. 